today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Two Rivers Boat Works takes on repairing and fully customizing a 39-foot CV. This is a very important boat to us because it's actually the boat that started this business. And George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Angelo Genovese aboard his custom-built Conkfish 16. These guys are starting from plans and building a boat, a one-off boat, from start to finish, all by themselves, going with a plan. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So today at Two Rivers Boatworks, I'm going to discuss our CV390Z. This is a very important boat to us because it's actually the boat that started this business. A little background on myself, I'm a South African and I have a unique story on how I got here. I got on my partner's catamaran in Mauritius, small island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, and basically spent a lot, about a year sailing to Stewart, Florida, where Kristen, my partner, was from. So what happened when I arrived in the States? I needed something to do. I had a boating business in South Africa, and the funny thing was that I used to watch this show in South Africa because in South Africa we don't have all these beautiful center consoles that we have in the States. And you know, my friends and I would get together for a braai, you guys call it a barbecue, and we would discuss and we would watch this show that I'm on and we used to dream about having these boats. So, we thought of various options, but we eventually settled on, well, we were gonna buy a boat, fix it up, and flip it. So we set a mission of finding a boat that didn't need too much work and wasn't horribly damaged, that we could fix up and bring back to better than new condition. So what happens, my partner Kristen and I found the CV390Z. Um, we still paid a lot of money for it, but we bought this boat and the idea was that we would take it home, work on it, fix it up and flip it. But after we bought the boat, we realized that, well, crikey, we don't have the space to put this boat in our driveway because it would fill our whole driveway. So we thought, well, we're probably going to need some space to fix this boat up. So we found our first premises. It just so happened that, well, that's how this business developed. But as business happens, we kind of fixed one or two other boats that were a quicker fix and we could move on. And then we started getting customer boats. So what happened is the CV kind of got put on the back burner. So w when we got the CV, um, from what we can figure is the boat was on her lift. We had just had Irma. The boat filled up with water, overloaded her lift, and actually broke her lift and she fell onto her side. The boat was not in terribly bad condition. There's a little bit of gunnel damage. The, the tuna door had obviously opened when she fell and it, it got kind of mangled. But other than that, there were a few small holes, nothing really, really serious. But we're not taking any chances, we know get all of the old electrics out, put new electrics in, put new systems in. We put in quad 400 Verados on it. So essentially it's a 2014 hull with very low hours on it that is going to get a complete remake. This is going to be an amazing boat. It's almost going to be my dream boat. But at the same time as it being my dream boat, I'm, I'm going to flip the boat too. So it's, it's going to be a kind of a unique project for us and it's a project that I'm really excited about. It's a project that I'm emotionally invested in because this is the original boat at Two Rivers.
when we return. FS Boating Editor George Labonte joins Dream Boat Owner Angelo Genovese aboard his custom-built Conkfish 16 in this week's One Man's Dream Boat segment. This segment brought to you by Bennett, superior by design. 50 years ago, Bennett Marine changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, helping boaters get on plane faster, reduce bow rise, correct listing, improve efficiency, and increase performance. Over one million systems later, worldwide, we offer durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters for all boat sizes, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems. Industry-leading innovation, plus the best warranty and service available. Get Bennett on board and enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Today we go to Key Biscayne, Florida to meet up with Angelo Genovese. Now Angelo is part of a collection of guys who all chipped in for a very unique project that we're seeing get a lot more traction in the world of boat rehab and boat building. Unlike most of the boats that we see on One Man's Dream Boat, these guys are starting from plans and building a boat, a one-off boat, from start to finish all by themselves going with a plan. Now the Conkfish 16 design is a Chris Morjohn design and he's offering a ton of plans for do-it-yourself guys to build their very own boats from scratch. They brought the set of plans and once I saw the plans, I was really interested because it was um, a nice boat. It looked like it was going to be a proven hull because it, it was already um, designed somewhat. But this is going to be the second one built. They rallied probably about a good seven or eight people that said they wanted to be involved. I had some experience building some boats out of molds never anything from scratch and to be honest with you i didn't know what it was going to entail how well it was going to come out with how long it would take it was just going in the unknown the group of friends like juniors all those friends that hang out at rattlesnakes we go camping every year together some of us only see each other once a year but it was just like if anybody wants to help on this boat we're going to do this project and if anybody wants to come out and work on it it's about eight to ten people that that showed up pretty much day one and uh hung in there for a while. So the build started on January 3rd, 2018. Yeah, Eric got it together really because he he took the plans and actually had them, um, he had all the plywood CAD cut just for the, the stations for the jig. So they were cut perfectly and then we uh, built a strong back and uh, put them all together, measured them out and went from there. So we kind of wanted to go with foam but we just figured we didn't really know enough about foam construction and we were afraid it was going to sag between the stations. So. Um, Chris Morjan told us, use wood, it's fun. So that's what we did, we brought cedar. Actually, Eric took care of that. Eric brought down two bundles of uh, white cedar and uh, they're cut an inch by three quarters. And that's what we skinned the jig with. That took a little while. There's over a hundred individual pieces of wood that got put on there. But once the boat was glued together, we pulled those off, took the screws out, and then we glassed it. We did a wood boat, so ours, you know, the glass we used is, uh, may not be the perfect glass for a foam boat. You know, it might need a little more heavier glass. Yeah, the whole fairing issue and getting all the corners, all the chines straight and square. And then, you know, some you want to be more square, some more rounded. And uh, all the inside radiuses. That was a lot of time consuming work. And then you got to get the sandpaper out and do work out your sand. fingers. We built a stringer for it and put that in after the fact, so we just had to make sure it was all the right shape before we glassed that all together. Yeah, the deck, um, we laid the foam out on top of the, the hull and pretty much traced the outline of it. Yeah, we just kind of draped the glass right over the boat, hung it down to get the shape and everything, and then let it dry and then popped it off and then flipped it over and did the inside of it. We were able to get some deck hatches, some deck hatch molds and some gutter molds, glassed over and fared them in. And uh, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And it came out good. We were able to use a spray shop that was really close to uh, John's shop. We were able to push the boat down the street, actually, and uh, laid two coats of primer out on the hull. We brought it back over, flipped it over, and started working on the inside. And uh, once the inside was about good to go, we brought it back to the um, boatyard where my friend works, and we were able to use their spray booth and he sprayed it out for us. 
The last thing that we were going to do was paint the deck, was paint the top side and uh, the deck, the floor, the boxes. After that, the rigging, John did the rigging, it took a week yeah. here and there. It wasn't much on it. A couple hours up, here and there. Battery lights and a uh, bolt on the tower, motor. We're still trying to figure out where we want to run the motor and what level and figuring out props. The wood plays a huge part in how the boat rides. Anybody that's been in a, a bigger wooden boat that's also stepped on this boat, just immediate, immediately when you start running, they said it, it has that, that wood boat soul to it. The boat is what the boat is. It's a, it's a 16 foot polling skiff that turns as sharp as you could ever want a boat to turn with no slide, that takes the chop extremely well. It keeps you dry. The deck, we made an extra six inches wider than what you would think the deck should be on that boat. Yeah, and, um, makes it feel a lot bigger than it is with the wider it deck. It is, it's not too tiffy when you get out on the edge of it either, and uh, it keeps you dry. Performance is um, amazing, really, and um, pulls very well, it's really quiet. It's just uh, it's a dream come true of a boat. Now something I thought about when I saw how many people were involved with this build was there's a lot of people owning it and a lot of people wanting to use it. Well that's actually a good thing in this case because this boat was really beautiful and it's a boat meant to be fished and I guarantee you this is not going to be a trailer queen and I guarantee you, you might see this boat on the water near you someday. After purchasing the hull materials, rigging and electronics, the cost of Angelo's dream boat comes to a total of $18,000. When we return, the experts at Two Rivers Boatworks begin structural repairs on the 39-foot CV project. This segment brought to you by Pacer Group, marine-grade electrical wire, components, and systems. For more than 30 years, Pacer Group has been the most trusted provider of wire, cable, and electrical products to the top marine manufacturers. All of our wire and cable is made in the USA to ensure it's the best in the industry. Pacer Group provides the highest quality electrical products to be found at one place. You can order with us at pacergroup.net. Shop online and ship or pick up your web order within an hour at our Hollywood, Florida location. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the experts at Two Rivers Boatworks begin the structural repairs on the 39-foot CV project. At Two Rivers, we now have the CV back in our work schedule. I've got Sterling on the job fixing all the little nicks and scratches, and he has a couple of hull repairs to do. Sterling has a wealth of experience in this, and I really trust that he's going to do a great job on this. So basically when I started the CV project, uh, someone who came in before me and did some work on the boat, they opened up a couple of really big holes. Uh, the biggest one probably one foot by one foot. And they did a good job. I'm guessing they ground out the crack all the way to the inner laminate on the hull. And there was still damage there. So basically what they did is they cut that entire area out. Now once that entire area is cut out, you want to basically taper that in so you have a flange to put material up against. So another key, key component to repairing any type of glass work is you just want everything to be recessed below the actual surface of the hull. If you put glass and it's higher than the hull, you're going to have a big hump and everybody's going to see it. It ain't going to look good. So you make sure everything's recessed enough to where you lay your laminates in the, inside the cutout and it still doesn't come outside of the hull surface. So when you're doing any type of uh, fiberglass repair, uh, you don't have to have any type of special pneumatic tools. You can go get a four and a half inch grinder, electric grinder, and just plug it in the wall and go ahead and grind that out. And then take the eight inch after that and just feather the edge and taper it like I talked about so it's recessed. So when you lay your glass in there, it is low to the hull surface. So when you got a big repair on the side of the hull and you're wondering how do I get this perfect shape, like how do I shape this piece of foam to sit into this Hull, hole that's in the hull. Basically, you get a piece of paper or cardboard and tape it over the hole. Use a pencil or your finger to draw the outline. Once you have the outline, you can cut it out with a razor blade. Now you have a piece of paper or cardboard or what have you that's the exact shape of your repair. Go ahead and lay that on top of your foam. Draw it out with a pencil. Take a razor blade and go ahead and cut that out. Now you have a piece of foam that will literally 
fit right into the repair. Another key, key component when in doing any type of fiberglass repair, a lot of people like to just take the foam and put glass over top of it, but the resin that you use will soak into the foam. It's very important you mix up a putty with cabosil and resin and make sure you lay a tight wipe of putty over foam or anything that you glass. Lay a tight wipe of putty over it. That allows the glass to actually take shape and take form and not create a bunch of air bubbles, which just generates another weak point in the boat. Now, because the fiberglass repair actually went through the hull, it's important that when we put backing into that hole, that there's fiberglass on the back side of that repair. If you just take a piece of Divinacil foam or any type of foam and just stick it in there, what's gonna happen is that back side of foam is eventually gonna get eaten away by the elements that are inside the boat and you're just gonna have a skin of glass. So you wanna make sure that the foam you put into the repair job has glass on the back side. So once you have the back side of your foam glassed and you're ready to put it into the hole, you just wanna make sure and scuff that glass so whatever you put to bond it to the boat will actually stick. And again, you'll take that putty and mix it up with the MEK, get it nice and hot and put it along the edge that actually touches that flange and go ahead and squish it into the boat. If it feels like it's gonna fall out, go ahead and grab a couple of drywall screws. Any type of screws are fine and just screw into that flange around the perimeter and that will keep it into the hull, nice and squished. And then basically, after that's kicked, give it 30 minutes or so, you can take those screws out and it should just stay in place and it should be looking pretty good at this point. When we come back, the experts at Two Rivers Boat Works continue the structural repairs on the 39-foot CV project. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate outboard motor. Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the experts at Two Rivers Boat Works strive for perfection as they make fiberglass repairs on the 39-foot CV project. So now that your foam's backed with glass and it's in the hole that you want to repair and you pulled your screws and you feathered the foam in and everything's a little bit recessed to the outside of the hull, you're going to be ready to basically put your laminates down and get this thing as strong as can be. Now when glassing, it's pretty important to use on the outside of a hull at least two laminates of what we call 1708. It's a 17 ounce glass that runs in 45s. And the, the 08 is just the matte backing. That's called 1708 and that is your best bet when doing uh, glass repairs. So what you want to do again is grab a piece of glass and go ahead and take that piece of paper that you used for the foam and trace it out on the glass. That again will give you the perfect shape that you're going to use. You'll mix up putty again, tightly pull it over the foam, make it as smooth as you can and get you a piece of cardboard. You have your resin mixed up and you got your glass cut out to the shape of the hole. Mix up your resin and wet out the cardboard. Put your glass down on that pool of resin and wet it out a little bit more. You don't want to use too much and you don't want to use too little. If the glass stays white, you need to add more resin. If you pick the piece of glass up and it's just dripping everywhere, it's, it's just too much. It's pretty basic. You just wet it out till it looks like it's absorbed enough resin. And then you'll put those right up against the boat and they'll just stick real nice to the boat. Now there's a thing called a bubble buster or a hard roller. You'll take that hard roller and just roll the bubbles out of that glass, going, making sure you go from end to end on the glass, and you'll just see it kind of blend in. And believe it or not, once that's blend in, just walk away, clean your tool, let that kick off, and that is going to be a very, very structural repair, and you will be ready for the fairing process. So once you've got your glass on the boat, you come back an hour later, it's hard as a rock. Any glass that went outside of the area that you're repairing, you wanna make sure you grind that back down to the hull side, and anything inside of the hull, 
you want to make sure you at least scuff it up because we're going to mix up some fairing compound and pull a wipe over that. You want to cover the entire area with this putty and then you want to come back when you think you have more than enough. A lot of putty on there. Take a straight edge, put it up against the side of the hull and you pull one wipe down. If you look at it and it just looks really messy and you still got time with your putty, feel free to put a little bit more on in the low spots that may not have gotten coverage and go ahead and pull up and or pull down again. So you come back to the boat and after your first wipe and everything's dried, the first thing you want to do is get what we call guide coat. It's basically a flat black spray paint. Trace over it, we call it tracer. You just spray paint over the entire area, even outside of it. What this does, it allows you to see what's high and what's low. This time we're not going to use an 8 inch grinder or any type of electrical power, air power tools. We're going to go straight to caveman style and use what we call a block. And you're going to start from one side to the other, just kind of how you read a book. And on 45 degree angles, you just want to start stroking this with, I would say, 60 grit to start because you're going to have a lot of stuff to knock down. And you're just going to put some power into it and you're going to block it on a 45 to the right. And then you're basically going to follow up that with a 45 to the left. And why they do that is because the scratches that go to the right will stay there unless you come back and knock them out the other way. And what that is, it's called the fairing process. Any of the highs that you have will knock down and you'll have lows that are left. They'll be black, hence why we traced it out. Those lows now need to be filled. So you'll do the same process we did in the first wipe and go ahead and do the same thing, pull over all those black areas that seem to have not filled, and that should really fill in like 80 to 85% of all your lows. Come back again with that tracer, same deal, just trace over the area. After going over this area a few times, you will see all of your putty start to blend and you'll just see nothing but that area that was damaged come out into play and that's what you want to see. When you have a perfectly smooth surface, you have confidence that when you go and spray over this repair, you're not going to see it. And that's, that's the huge feat that you're trying to basically just overcome. So I'm really blown away with the job that Sterling and his crew did. I find that I ran my hand over the job and it is actually perfect. I can't feel a high spot or a low spot and it runs true to the rest of the hull. I'm really impressed with Sterling and his crew on what they've been able to achieve on this boat. They're doing a fantastic job and I'm really very, very proud of all of them. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat, the team at Wildfire Marine continues the transformation on the 23-foot Seacraft restoration. The experts at Two Rivers Boatworks perform the final paintwork on the 27 Stewart. George Labonte joins Dreamboat owner Mike Clark aboard his fully restored 20-foot Mako. And Bird's All Marine fabricates the custom top for Corey's 23-foot Seacraft.